Today we are going to explore the long awaited and highly anticipated Mikasa battleship. Hope you guys didn't wait too long for this rare opportunity. Today you will see the outside as well as lots of inside of the battleship. I'll walk you through different areas, compartments and decks of the ship. This will be an exciting excursion. Make sure to watch the whole thing to find out the significance of the vessel. I think you will be amazed. This is the Mikasa battleship docked in Yokosuka, Japan about an hour away from Tokyo. The battleship was built in 1900s and in commission from 1902 to 1923. It was named after the Mikasa mountain aka the Wakakusa mountain located in Nara, Japan. That Nara where lots of deer roam. On the outside there is this mighty cannon that was brought from the ship. It is a 6 inch caliber gun if you will. Caliber referring to the bore diameter and look at this massive shell that goes inside the cannon. Wow! Starting by the Mikasa entrance, let's see the prices. At about 600 yen or about 560 US dollars, the prices are very reasonable. Entering right on the upper deck, this is a main 12 inch gun. By the way, you can get a 30 minute or a 60 minute tour all in Japanese or you can just wander here by yourself. We decided to go with the latter. As you will shortly see, there are a lot of different paths to go on different levels. Let's just go ahead and start with this upper deck. Looking at the brief memoir tabloid, it is clear that this ship participated in the Japanese Russo War between 1904 and 1905. We are standing on the original deck built in 1900. A little bit of history, it is a pre-dreadnought battleship, meaning it carried super heavy guns and fully enclosed rotating platforms known as turrets. Mikasa was powered by two coal-fired vertical triple expansion steam engines and it has two shafts. The length of a ship is 432 feet or almost 132 meters with over 1500 long ton displacement. These are some artifacts left from the Russo-Japanese war. Sailors loading one of the 14 6-inch guns to get ready for battle. This ship has has 4 18 inch torpedo tubes, 4 12 inch guns, 14 6 inch guns, 23 inch guns and 12 1.85 inch guns. This ship was built by the Vickers shipyard in England. Look at the spectacular auxiliary 3 inch gun that was used to fight battles. They have these lined up along port and starboard sides of the ship. You can see that these guns provide protection when being utilized. Standing on the upper deck, these are the funnels or the smoke stacks and the air intakes that let the steam, the smoke and the exhaust expel out from the engines. From here they look pretty mighty. Hammocks for the sailors to rest and always be ready near the gun. This sign shows you not to climb the pillar even if you want to feel high up above the clouds. Going through the door, this is another massive main 12 inch gun on the upper deck ready for combat. Just look at that beast! This beast is right at the forward or the front end of the battleship and it looks intimidating. Who would want to mess with this Wild Wild West style? I don't think there will be many takers up for this challenge and at least not in those days. Check out this deck and the beautiful Japanese flag waving high up in the air. Now these hold and support the massive chains with the anchors needed for the ship. There are two up front here. By the way, these 12 inch guns are a reproduction and were added after the post war restoration on September 11th in the year of 1905 after a magazine exploded in Sasebo, killing 251 sailors. This was an accident. Fortunately, Mikas was repaired almost a year later at the Sasebo Naval Arsenal in August of 1906. All the way at the front of the ship, standing high up by the edge by this beautiful flag waving high up above the air beneath the dark sky, a titanic scene was carefully recreated in real life and history was relieved like never before. It was a bit windy, even breezy, but nevertheless the water seemed calm and quiet today and I did not see any sharks, whales or octopus. By the way, a quick fact, do you recall from my previous Mikasa Park video that this was a flagship of Togo Heihachiro who was the Vice Admiral of the Imperial Japanese Navy or IJN. Anyways, located right in the park and behind us, Yokosuka's view of this beautiful city once again did not disappoint. 
Wow, check out these massive linked chains which I could not even wrap one of my hands around it. They hold front anchors down below. There must be a lot of tension on them and they do not even complain. You see how long they extend? Just compare how big these 12 inch guns are relative to my body. At this time I decided to go to the edge of the starboard side of the vessel. It's kind of cool to walk on the ship where history took place. As you can see there are lots of guns on this ship, one is right next to me and one is right below me. By the way, that island up there in the distance is called the Monkey Island or Sarushima in Japanese. Heading up on one of the decks, it is nearly impossible to escape the sight of the funnels, the smokestacks and the air intakes. Heading a little bit higher, ironically, it's very peaceful to be up here. As you can see, there are not a lot of people here either. This is one of the 3 inch guns placed up here. Coming closer to the gun, you can see the big human shield on both sides of the gun. Hmm, I don't know if I would still feel safe with it regardless. I would probably need a bigger shield. <laughs> How powerful do you feel being above this 12 inch gun? <laughs> Steering is shielded by 35 centimeters or almost 14 inches of steel plates. This is so tight in here. Look at this. You can see how tight it is up here. <laughs> now we're really high up, but not high enough. Heading up more stairs to this little deck, we reach what is known as the forecastle, which is simply a deck that is raised at the bow of a ship. On the left, it's the bridge for communications throughout the ship. On the right, it's the chart room, where navigational tools were stored. The bridge I was talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the 60 cm or almost 24 inch signal searchlight. These lights were used to send signals to the consort ships as well as to search for enemy targets and enemy aircraft in the dark. The luminosity output of the lamps used were rated at 135 million candelas or about 1.7 billion lumens. For aircrafts traveling at around 5000 feet or 1500 meters, the range was at the time an impressive 3 miles or 5 kilometers. Trying to fit through this tight space on the side of the ship and continue the self-paced tour, I came to another signal searchlight on the port side of the vessel. They had them all over the ship, here it is. Now finally deciding to go all the way up on the top gallon forecastle right above the bridge room that you saw earlier, this is where the Admiral Togo Hei Hachiro of the Mikasa battleship would send different orders to his fleet by using this communication bridge you see right here. Just imagine standing up here and commanding your crew while having one of the most unobstructed views on the ship. Opposite of the communications bridge on the same top gallon forecastle, you see different observation platforms. On this same deck we're on, you see the coincidence rangefinder or a telemeter that assists in determining a correct distance to a visible object before firing a shot at that object. As you can see, pretty much everything is visible from up here and if you haven't yet noticed, I am super high up. I definitely want to maintain my safe distance up here and hold onto the rails. I don't want to be blown away by the wind. On my right or ship's port side, those are the lifeboats. Let's take a moment to gaze at this view one last time. At this time I would like to head down to a different area that I'm going to show you. Once again, those are the lifeboats that are covered up in tarp. I'm not sure exactly how many lifeboats there are, but it seems like a decent amount. Okay, now heading up another platform, there is a spotlight on my right. At this time I want to go up two more flights of stairs to see what's up there. Come on, don't give up now, I know you want to check out that view. Oh, the view is nice.
This is the rear navigation tool. Have you ever used a navigation tool like this? Please leave a comment below. This sign basically says not to lean due to scraping of the paint. This is the view that you see up here including the naval Japanese flag in the distance, the Vice Admiral Tug on my right. The view from another angle, some of the paint is a bit rusted and is chipping due to the ocean salt, hopefully it will be restored soon. At this time I decided to head down to check out the view on the side of the ship. Are you curious what I'm looking at? Well, check this out! This is the bunker under the stairs that I just came down from. It's somewhat tight to get to the inside of the bunker as well, but once you get in, you can see these slits for observation. It is not really high up here, but nevertheless, if I am safe during a battle, I would rather stay in here. Okay, so let's see what we can see from one of the slits. <laughs> this took me down by surprise. Oof, you always gotta be ready for anything. Mm, to my surprise, you can gain a full panoramic view, which should be a necessity. Alright, enough with the upper deck. Let's head down to the main deck and explore that part of the ship. Carefully heading down not to hit your head. It's a little bit tight on the ladder. But once you get all the way down, it's very spacious with lots of rooms and lots of passageways. Just have a look for yourself. There are numerous models of ships throughout this level. There is so much history throughout the ship. Heading to one of the rooms, there is a 6-inch gun and some historic maps laid out throughout the rooms, showing battles, expansion and travel of the Mikasa. One thing I learned is that Admiral Togo between 1904 and 1905 led this battleship to the Japanese Russo War over expanding and dominating the lands of Korea and Manchuria, modern-day China and Russia. Later, with the President Theodore Roosevelt's Treaty of Portsmouth at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard in Maine, this war was negotiated and ended at the end of August of 1905, earning Roosevelt a Nobel Peace Prize. Wow, what a story. You gotta watch your head when going between the frames. Remember I said there are a lot of model ships here? Well, this whole wall is covered with hundreds of them, including carriers, battleships, submarines, helicopters, and even bomber airplanes, like the ones produced by Kawasaki, Mitsubishi, including Nakajima and Yokosuka bombers. All of these are scalable models. You can see there are a lot of details on every aircraft, like little fighter and attack aircrafts on the flight decks. All of these are Imperial Japanese navies and Japanese self-defense forces, arsenal, and aircrafts that served them throughout many years. All of these are significant artifacts. There are also maps showing all of the battles Mikasa participated in, like the Battle of the Yellow Sea, the Battle of Tsushima, and the Battle of the Sea of Japan. There's an incredible history to all of this. Throughout the ship, there are numerous televisions showing and explaining different battles and the various strategies that were taken upon the Japanese Navy. There are even 3D maps just like this one. The TVs tell history. That is why it was necessary to destroy the Russian Pacific fleet on the Lushan side with a preemptive attack. Therefore, after Japan notified the Russian government of the termination of diplomatic... Hatch down to the lower deck. As I was heading down this nicely lit corridor, somehow I ended up in this room at the time of some gathering for some private event. As much as I wanted to explore the area I left, because I was told I couldn't be there. This was fine with me, because there is so much more to see. Some of the medals awarded from different countries. This is how a typical bulkhead is designed and looks. Pretty typical, isn't it? Entering the simulator room or the simulator of ship handling at the Battle of Tsushima as it is called, you can experience a full control of maneuvering the Mikasa battleship through the seas, including firing some onboard guns. 
Another open room contains the ship's wheel, which was also used to steer the boat, hopefully in the right direction. A little bit further, a display set up explaining the insides of the whole battleship from the upper deck to the main deck, including different miscellaneous parts like engine room. You can learn a lot here. Behind this glass display there are what looks like some of the original manuscripts preserved from history. Behind this glass display is an actual model of the Mikasa battleship. Do you recognize those 12-inch guns at each end of the vessel and those 3-inch guns on the sides? What about those lifeboats that I pointed out earlier on our tour on the upper deck? Pretty spectacular to see it in this perspective, isn't it? Even the Imperial Japanese Navy flag is flown. Wow, a different model of a battleship! This cool animation shows you a battle between the Russians and the Japanese in the Russo-Japanese War. It shows you in great detail how the Russian ships traveled and progressed through the sea, dominating different territories or at least attempting at doing so. Different medals won by Mikasa's crew members more historic manuscripts and artifacts. Going through the hallway, I found a lot of educational and bridge programs for students and kids. This one is between Japan and the US. Hallways are clean and nicely lit up for safety. One of the many rooms with more educational information and what looks like a 6-inch gun. I stumbled upon this model of a massive, what looks to be a US boat. Since the Mikasa battleship was greatly involved in the Russo-Japanese war, it's no wonder that there are some Russian artifacts here. This sign says Высшее военно-морское училище имени Макарова, or Makarov Naval School, which is located in Vladivostok, Russia. The Admiral Stepan Makarov's flagship took part in the Russo-Japanese war depicted here. One of the Russia's admirals from St. Petersburg. History on friendly 2005 Japanese visit to Russia. On this wall you see different Japanese flags from Vice Admiral to Senior Captain of the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force including their naval ranks all clearly displayed. Going through one of the doors I found the captain of the boat. There is so much to see here and the boat is so big that you can even find some unexpected things. Looks like a statue of the Vice Admiral Togo himself. I knew he was with us all along. On the left, there's a donation box and this blue placard with a little history of the significance of the Mikasa ship for Japan. This is the Admiral Togo's sleeping chamber, which was obviously upscale compared to the rest of the sailors. Going through this room, this is the captain's office with a table and couple of couches. It is known as the saloon. Across the saloon, there is this little kitchenette area. Notice the little round window on the right-hand side. Next room is the Admiral's Saloon. Of course, there is one of the guns here and the seating area. In this admiral's room, many meetings were held and official meals were consumed. Remember that in the Japanese Navy, admiral outranks the captain, hence the nicest room. Hello, admiral. This is the captain speaking. I guess since this was the captain speaking, she outranks me as the admiral. Regardless, I like the big windows. The adjacent room is the admiral's cabin with this nice table and a skylight up top. Isn't this awesome? Another big window from which I would gaze all day as an admiral. A different side of the admiral's saloon and once again it has the same gun as on the other side so that you are protected not just from one side but from both sides. Once again the same huge table with a huge bench and chairs. 
As I walked through here, I felt in control. Another nice display room with naval uniforms and musical instruments like trumpets, saxophone, flutes and even violin. Additional manuscripts and writings. At this point I think it will be good to head up, so let's go ahead and do that. Exiting the main deck, the weather is still pleasant, so let's explore just a little bit more on this side and the outside. Looks like some type of a leisure rest area with a medical box. I'm not exactly sure what the sign says, so if you know, please leave your comments below. The sign on the left says coin lockers. Heading out on this deck, look how nicely it is preserved. Finally, we got to the outside of the Mikasa ship. Let me show you a little bit more of the location and the surrounding area. Let's just go through the whole length of the ship. Take a note of all the guns that you will see here. Take a look one last time at the Japanese flag waving forward of the ship in complete serenity. Now let's explore the rest of the Mikasa Park and finish this off. So what do you think? What do you think about this battleship uh, here in Yakuska, Japan? How would you like it? Tell us. It was really nice. You got to go in all the spaces and it's pretty cool. They restored a lot and they have a lot of history in there. So why is this all closed in here? So this part of the park's closed for now. In the spring there's really pretty flowers and there's like little waterfalls here and it's really pretty in the spring when everything's growing. Well, thank you very much for the interview. Right now, some other parts of the park, as you can see, were under renovation and some minor cosmetic restoration. Regardless, this was a fantastic expedition of the famous Mikasa battleship. So when you're in Japan, I definitely recommend touring the ship. Subscribe, and until next time. If you want to see more awesome videos, then make sure to follow, subscribe, like, and of course, hit that bell down below so that you do not miss any of my new content. See you in my next video.